Names of cities, towns, villages change when cities are conquered or inhabited by multiple groups of peoples. They can even have numerous names originating from numerous languages, all being used simultaneously. Let's look at an example. Most people know Istanbul used to be known as Constantinople, but Constantinople was not renamed right when the Ottomans first marched into the city in 1453. You see, Greeks would refer to Constantinople as just the city. So when Turks first came to the region and asked for directions to Constantinople, the common answer would probably have been to point in a direction and say Istimbolin, which in Greek meant to the city. Over the next few hundred years, Istanbul would gradually become the popular name of the city, at least among its Turkic inhabitants. It was much later that when the Republic of Turkey was founded and its founder Mustafa Kemal Atatürk changed the Turkish alphabet to the Latin one, that he also standardized the names of many cities, towns, and villages including changing the name of Constantinople to Istanbul officially in 1930. But by this time, both names were already being used by the inhabitants. So to recap, people used one name, then people used both names, then government asked everyone to use just one of the names that was already being used. Therefore, we can say that this name change happened somewhat naturally over a long period of time, unlike the thousands of other names that the rest of this video is about. In 1880, under the reign of Sultan Abdul Hamid II, the word Armenia was banned in the Ottoman Empire. It was not allowed to be used in press, school books, and any governmental establishments. In 1916, at the height of World War I, just after having decimated the Armenian population of the Ottoman Empire, the Minister of War, Enver Pasha, issued an order declaring, It has been decided that provinces, districts, towns, and villages mountains and rivers which are named in languages belonging to non-Muslim nations such as Armenian, Greek, or Bulgarian will be renamed into Turkish. This decree inspired support from many Turkish intellectuals. One author inspired by the efforts of Enver Pasha wrote, If we want to be the owner of our country, then we should turn even the name of the smallest village into Turkish and not leave its Armenian, Greek, or Arabic variants. Only in this way can we paint our country with its colors. Enver Pasha initially decided not to change the geographical names belonging to Muslim minorities such as the Arabs and the Kurds because at the time the Ottoman government was playing the role of a Muslim caliphate. But after the fall of the Ottoman Empire in 1922, the new leader Mustafa Kemal Atatürk aimed to create a new nation-state based on Turkish nationalism and secularism. So under his rule, name changes continued in the now Republic of Turkey, this time in addition to Armenian, Greek and Georgian, also targeting some Muslim minorities like the Kurds. Imported maps were banned and by 1927, all street and square names within Istanbul which were not of Turkish origin were changed. In 1940, the Ministry of Interior issued another circular which called for original or foreign language place names to be substituted with Turkish place names. In 1952, the Special Commission for Name Change was created under the supervision of the Ministry of Interior which worked all the way until 1978 and renamed 35% of all village names in Turkey. Overall, approximately 28,000 names were changed, including 12,000 village or town names, 4,000 mountains, rivers, and other geographic names, as well as streets, monuments, quarters, and neighborhoods. 
Now is a good time to reiterate that a lot of these name changes were not natural and did not happen over a long period of time, but were created artificially and implemented instantaneously, often invented in an office by this committee. Some of the newer names resemble their native names, but with a revised Turkish twang to it, such as the Armenian Akhtamar became the Turkish Akhtamar. After being abolished in 1978, the committee was reinstated in 1980 following a military coup and changed the name of 280 more villages and finally was closed again in 1985. In 81, the Turkish government stated that approximately 12,000 names that are non-Turkish or originate from non-Turkish roots are causing confusion, have been examined and replaced with Turkish names. Ah, yes, those names were confusing. You know, like in case somebody were to see one of these names and wonder about their true origins. That would be terribly confusing. Let's take a look at an analysis of the name changes and a few examples. Official Turkish statistics claim that the total number of village, town, cities and settlements renamed are 12,211. Turkish-Armenian linguist Sevan Nishanyan, through an independent study, estimated that of the name changes, 4,200 were Greek, 4,000 were Kurdish, 3,600 were Armenian, 750 Arabic, 400 Assyrian, 300 Georgian, 200 Laz and 50 others. Most of the geographical name changes occurred in the eastern provinces of the country where minority populations tended to live. Looking at the Armenian names specifically, one easy way to identify some Armenian place names are by suffixes such as Gert, which in Armenian means built by, or Shen or Van. These are similar to the English Vil or Bury, etc. All of these names were targeted. For example, if I asked my grandmother where her family is from, she would say Dikranagirt, which in Armenian means built by Tigran. But if you're thinking, wow, Mr. HOA, this Dikranagirt sounds like a lovely place, I would love to visit it some, well, you can't. In November of 1937, after Turkish President Mustafa Kemal Atatürk visited this city, ordered that it be renamed Diyarbakir, which means land of copper in Turkish, after the abundant resources of copper around the city. Now, I am aware that this particular city was known as Ahmed for Kurds and Assyrians. Indeed, as we discussed earlier, many of these places were called differently by the various minorities present in the region. However, the point is that these names were passed down through generations of natives and bear hundreds or thousands of years of history while the new names were made up by a committee in an office to obscure history and attempt to cover up a century of ethnic cleansing. The ridiculous charade went so far that references to Armenia were even removed from the scientific names of animals such as the wild sheep, Ovis Armeniana, and the roe deer, Capreolus Armenius. As for non-Armenian names, Smyrna is perhaps a better example of a Greek city name that was changed in the last century after its destruction when Turkey urged other countries to use the new Turkish name Izmir, which is now the third largest city in Turkey. Despite this, the historic name of Smyrna persists in some languages such as Armenian, Italian, Portuguese and Spanish. Georgian and Laz names were also cancelled. One example is the town of Fitze, being renamed to Fındıklı, meaning place with hazelnuts in Turkish. When it comes to Kurdish names, as we saw, they were initially exempt from the name changes in the Ottoman Empire due to their Islamic orientation. But after the collapse of the Ottoman Empire and the extermination of other minorities, the new Turkish government turned towards persecuting the remaining ones, most notably the Kurds.
We tend to think of history as a thing that's frozen in the past, something that no longer has any effect on us. Except, just last week, while I was still working on the script for this video, Turkey allied Azerbaijan asked Google to remove fake Armenian names from Google Maps in territories they recently occupied from the Republic of Artsakh. Territories from where we have plenty of evidence of Armenian churches disappearing into thin air. I hope I have outlined enough reasons why this should raise an eyebrow. Renaming places is the last step of a cycle that's been repeating for a century. Destroy, erase, rename, repeat. For more on that, check out my History of Artsakh video. But for now, let's get back to the original point of this video to conclude. Although geographical names have been formally changed in Turkey, some native names persisted and continue in local dialects throughout the country. At times, even Turkish politicians have used the native names of cities during their speeches, most notably, in 2009, when talking about his family origins, Recep Tayyip Erdogan used the native Greek name of Potamia instead of the Turkish Gunesu. Maybe that's why they said that the names were confusing 